Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna talk about brown roots on orchids and what do they mean. Recently in one of my Q&A videos, somebody asked why their Phalaenopsis orchid roots were brown and she actually found an older video of mine that would display something similar. So I thought a compilation of brown roots is welcome because it is one of the most asked questions on my channel. So today I will go through the most common causes of brown roots. Sometimes there's nothing to worry about while other times it can signify that the orchid is stressed or it doesn't like something, but it's not always root rot. So first let's start with the good roots and the instances in which brown roots are actually normal and healthy. In the vast majority of cases, healthy orchid roots are light colored. Some species have properly white roots while others, like the Phalaenopsis and the Vanda, have silvery roots. When you water them and if the root has chlorophyll pigments, they go green. For these orchids, brown roots are not necessarily a good sign. However, there are orchids which naturally have brown roots. And the most common ones are the slipper orchids, Paphiopetalums or Phragmipediums. These are not epiphytic orchids, meaning they don't grow on trees. Some of them are lithophytes, others are terrestrials or semi-terrestrials. Bottom line, none of these orchids have silvery or white roots. They all have brown fuzzy roots and that is absolutely normal. But if you've never experienced a paphiopetalum, it can be slightly shocking and you might think the root is dead. Now with the paphiopetalums, when you lose roots, it's hard to tell, unlike a phalaenopsis, let's say. So the only way to tell if a paphiopetalum root is dead is by pressing on it, and if it's papery and mushy, then obviously it's dead. Otherwise, it rarely changes color all that much. And to make things even more confusing, when paphiopetalum or generally slipper orchid roots grow, they're kind of whitish, yellowish. The tip can actually be very, very yellow, and again, having yellowish or beige roots on other orchids might be a little scary, not in the case of slipper orchids. Again, mind you, these are not epiphytic orchids, so if you ever see root tips starting in the air or that the root is growing in the air, make sure you cover it because slipper orchid roots stop growing in the air. If your orchid starts to put out roots high on the stem, you need to bury it a little bit more because those roots will not develop. Sometimes it can be slightly confusing how much to bury a Paphiopetalum orchid, but the rule of thumb, or actually my guideline with slipper orchids, is that the line of the roots, practically where the new root tip sprout, needs to be under the soil line, even just by a little bit. Otherwise, I know that those roots will not grow and my orchid possibly, and in time, will start to remain without roots. Some maxillaria orchids naturally have brown or beige roots. Some even have slightly reddish roots, especially when they grow. Unlike the paths though, these roots are not so thick and not so fuzzy, but if your maxillaria orchid puts out beige roots or brownish roots again, it might just be very, very normal. And then I'm sure there are other orchids with slightly more colored roots. One of them is the Dendrobium spectabile. I cannot say it has really, really proper brown roots, but indeed they are beige. And when I saw them, I tried Googling it a little bit because I was not sure if they were healthy, but it's normal. It's just natural pigmentation. So if your orchid has beigey brown roots, the first thing you need to do is just Google it and see how normal natural roots look like. And if they look beige, there's nothing to worry about. Second of all, we might have staining on the roots. So first let's start with the easy one. Some organic media contains tannin. Now tannin is an acid and it has a brown color. Things like bark and coconut husk can actually leach out tannin in the water because brown and wood in general does contain tannin. In my experience, coconut husk leaches out more tannin than anything and it tends to stain anything it touches, including the vellum of the roots. In this instance though, the roots will have patches of browning. They're not necessarily going to be very even. Some spots might be darker in color while others might be a little lighter. And this patchiness can look very much like salt burn, which we'll talk about after the tannin stain. But the difference is 
context, of course. If you're not using anything that can contain tannin, obviously you cannot have tannin staining. Not all bark tends to stain, usually kiwi bark doesn't stain all that much, while the normal processed uh, pine bark does stain a little bit, but the most staining I saw was indeed from coconut husk. No matter if I pre-soaked it and prepare it beforehand, it still stained the roots and not only it stained the plastic container or the pot I was using. So if you have patchiness and you have some coconut husk, look at the pot as well. If the pot has brown staining as well, then it's pretty obvious the orchid has tannin stains on her roots. Now, these are not very detrimental and definitely they do not affect the root system if they're not very concentrated. Being that tannin is an acid, if it's excessive, of course, it can drive down the pH way too low. And then we're gonna talk about different types of staining or burning. But if you just have a little bit of staining on the pot and on the roots, that's perfectly fine. It doesn't mean the roots are not healthy or that they're suffering, but most of the times you cannot really get that tannin out of the root velamen and don't even try with a brush or anything because you're gonna damage the root. A third type of brown staining is actually detrimental and it's caused by salt buildup or excessive salts. In this instance, we are not talking about a pigmentation of the velamen, but actually a damaged part of the velamen, which looks like brown staining. Again, this can be more severe or less severe depending on the case and the salt buildup or accumulation can come from the water source you're using or from the fertilizer. If you're using tap water, which is hard, it usually contains excessive calcium and magnesium salts, but not only, some other salts as well. If they build up, which they will in time, they can deposit on the velamen and they can start to burn it. This will show as patches and it's very similar to tannin staining. But if you have them side by side, you'll discover that the salt staining looks like it's a little bit more aggressive, looks like it changed the structure of the velamen as well. If you run your fingers through those patches, you'll feel they're slightly harder. That's why we call it a burn, because it actually affects the velamen as well. In time, if you don't correct the situation, obviously it can get very, very bad and in the end it can kill off the root. The second way in which you can obtain salt burns is through excessive fertilizer. If you use too much fertilizer and the orchid cannot pick it up within the time in which it's a liquid, then it will deposit on the velamen and it will start to burn it. And this can be very extreme depending on the case. And the discussion here is slightly more elaborate because there are multiple things you can do. One, start to introduce flushes and if you don't know what they are, check the description down below. I'll add a link with my preferred way to flush. Pretty much it refers to using plain water with no fertilizer just to rinse off the medium. I like to soak the orchids to give time for those salts to completely dissolve. Also, you might want to think about changing the medium if you're using organic medium. Maybe it has some accumulations and with organic medium it's kind of hard to remove salts, particularly if it's old and already a little bit spongy, a little bit decomposed. Also, you might want to pipe down on fertilizer, either change the brand, maybe you're using something unsuited for orchids, you might want to dose less than the recommended dosage if you have a recovering orchid or a very tiny orchid or a seedling or one with excessively slow growth. Those are details and for the main part, Phalaenopsis, Cattleyas, Dendrobiums, these are medium growers, let's say. They do require quite a bit of fertilizer, but there are some instances in which orchids really don't require a lot of fertilizer, but these are the Mastavalias, Miltoniopsis, uh, some miniature orchid species, not necessarily Phalaenopsis. So again, you need to assess a little bit your situation and the orchid you're dealing with, the season as well. In winter, they usually don't require as much fertilizer and so on. So, as I was saying, it's a little bit more elaborate, this discussion, but at least get the cause right if you feel like you're fertilizing a little bit too much and especially if you notice salt accumulations, I don't really have much now because I just flushed, let's see. If you notice some salt accumulations on the top of the medium, no matter what type of medium you're using, you might want to do a flush. You might be actually dealing with some buildup. In the case of clay, the smallest, tiniest bit of buildup will show up because that's just the nature of clay to produce efflorescence, to pull out the salts from within. Uh, but it doesn't mean you have a big accumulation. Uh, however, However, in organic media, if you have this on top of the medium, it's already a little bit too much and you should definitely flush. And the last scenario is root rot, which is what we're all afraid of. Now, in my opinion, root rot is a very generic term for a multitude of causes. You can have roots simply getting suffocated 
by the medium. If you have very compacted moss or very fine medium or soil for an epiphytic orchid, they can get suffocated. The roots will die off and obviously, like any organic material, when it's dead, it starts to decompose and becomes brown. So yeah, we have root rot, but it's not necessarily a disease that caused it. It's just suffocation of the roots and in my opinion it's the main cause for root rot because it can happen even with proper soil. If it's too old, in the case of organic media, it can change its structure, it can become more compacted and more spongy let's say. And that of course will lead to root rot in the end but through suffocation. Then there are the damaging factors. Let's say the medium got a little bit too acidic and it's starting to affect the velamen. The velamen gets a little bruise here and there, parts of it start to die off and in the end the entire root dies off because parts of the velamen are affected and again because it's dead it starts to decompose, it looks brown, it's root rot. But the cause is way different. And also there can be an ailment, there can be a fungal disease or bacterial disease taking over the root and again it will lead to browning of the roots, decomposition of the roots and in the end root rot. But the cause is obviously different. So it's hard to tell what the cause of root rot is in many cases. My impression due to my experience is that suffocation is the number one factor and this can be caused by old medium, compacted medium in the case of sphagnum moss and so on and so forth. But in the case of root rot you will see the roots are properly mushy. The root is a more consistent browning, it's not patched necessarily and of course it's mushy. It doesn't have structure anymore, it doesn't have that rigidness that it it used to have, it doesn't green up when you water it, you can tell it's absolutely gone. And root rot can happen to any orchid, not only Phalaenopsis, but again the causes are various and you need to really think about the instance and the history of the orchid and its particular case to discover what caused root rot. As I was saying, it doesn't really have a simple answer and just putting a stamp on it, oh root rot because um, of a disease, it's kind of wrong because it's not going to prevent you in suffocating other roots for the future. That's why finding the real cause is important, not just stamping a name on the ailment your orchid has. So in my opinion, these are the most common culprits when it comes to brown roots, but of course you might have others. If you guys experienced other instances of brown roots, leave us a comment down below. Share with us your experience so we can all learn more, but in my experience these are the usual suspects as the movie goes. So thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope it was useful and you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and subjects of the sorts, turn on notifications if you'd like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video and if you're curious about the medium or the pots that I use and everything that I use in my grow space on a regular basis, expand the description and you'll have everything listed there. And well, that's it, I'll see you guys tomorrow, bye!